Hello, gorgeous. Welcome to HG Radio, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration. Here is your co-founder and host, Kim Becker. Hello, gorgeous, and thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Kim Becker, and this is Hello, Gorgeous, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration on Society Bites Radio, social interaction for the mind and soul. Our guest today is Geraldyn O'Brien. Geraldyn is a licensed esthetician who specializes in oncology-focused skincare. Geraldyn provides skincare consultations, facials, and spa days at Waterford Place Cancer Resource Center in Aurora, Illinois. In 2018, she helped to design and implement a pilot program called Simply Beautiful, which educates women in safe skincare and makeup while enhancing each woman's natural beauty. She is an ambassador with Oncology Spa Solutions, where she helps bring oncology awareness to local aesthetic schools and estheticians <clears throat> in Illinois and serves as a contributor to the Integrative Cancer Review Online. Geraldine works to empower those impacted by cancer and continues to advocate on their behalf. She says that healing is a journey and she constantly sees the benefits that wellness programs provide to cancer patients and their families. Hi, Geraldine, and welcome to the show. Hello, Kim. Happy to be back. Good. Well, I was going to say, yes, this is the second time we're doing this. And, you know, the first time your story is so inspirational about your cancer journey that that kind of monopolized our time. And we <laughs> talked more about the cancer and, and your, um, and the, the, I guess, journey is the right word, the journey that you've taken through that. And so um, I certainly wanted to have you come back on the show because I feel like, you know, people don't understand how important it is to make sure that your skincare and your makeup and, and all of that is, is it's, you pay attention to that while you're going through cancer treatment. So I'm grateful. Right. Thank you for coming back again. Oh, thank you. Yes. I tend to sometimes, you know, gloss over that part, but I think that's an important part of why we, you know, why I got into, you know, the skincare portion of it, you know, and it was, after my first cancer ended, you know, in 1998, you know, my doctor said, well, you have probably a 30% chance of it coming back. Just go home and don't think about it and pretty much live your life like you did before. Well, you know, that's not so easy to sometimes do. And uh, so I wanted to, you know, live healthier and do things. You know, I sought out a yoga class and I started walking more and, kind of looking into what I was putting on my skin and everything. And back in 98, there wasn't as much talk about like there is now. So, um, you know, I worried about at the time I had a 16 year old daughter, nine year old son, and, you know, I just wanted to do whatever I could to make sure that I continued to live the best life I could. And, um, I needed hope <laughs> without hope. What do we have? So, That's right. um, yeah, and it was hard to search out a lot of integrative and complementary therapies, but um, I did, and uh, I actually joined a yoga study. They were looking for breast cancer survivors, and I entered the study, and it was how yoga was going to help benefit those with breast cancer, and um, it just was, you know, just a wonderful thing to start doing, and I then became, um, I joined a breast cancer support group was one mm -hmm. of the first things I did. And mm -hmm. that was like so much of what everybody had questions on. You know, their doctors were curing their cancers and they were happy with their team they put together, but it was that personal side. It was all the questions like, how do I move forward? You know, what I'm in, you know, what I'm using on my skin, what I'm, eating, how to stay healthier and get some exercise. And then I also became a reach to recovery volunteer with American Cancer Society. And um, again, you know, everybody, this was um, a program they had that was cancer survivors who were finished with treatment and they would match you with somebody just like you, you know, mm. close to your age, close to the cancer you had. And again, it was all these questions about, I don't want this to come back. What do I do? You know, and then, 
you know, I, and I loved helping people seek out resources. And I started looking into different things, you know, like when doctors, you know, when insurance companies were refusing treatment, when they didn't have the um, funds to get medications, I found that there were, you know, pharmaceutical companies that would give you products, you know, so I would, you know, individually help each person. And um, I really enjoyed doing that. And then, well, in two- and I think that's one of the things that, that I have heard too, is that people say, number one, you know, everybody else has kind of walked their normal life and they don't have anybody mm-hmm. in their life that can say, I know what you're going through. So I think that right. recovery program is very important. It is. It is. I think it is. I think it's a really good program. And, you know, you have to, too, like when it's time for them to ask, you know, certain questions, that's your doctor's question. You know, that's not something um, I could answer. But there's just so many questions that you, the doctor just doesn't have time to address. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I always um, heard, too, I think that, you know, women, when you get done with treatment, it's kind of a it's um, it's stark all of a sudden. It's you're right. It's what do I do next? And what I have heard so yeah. often is that you know for the last whatever two, three, four years, you've had somebody checking your blood work, doing a scan, mm-hmm. you know, taking all your vitals to make sure that you're okay. And then all of a sudden, it's oh, like what they told you. Okay, go live your life. And I think there are so many women, right, that are just kind of like, well, time out a minute. What do I do for how many years? Somebody has always been there checking on me. Who's going to check on me now? Who's going to move forward? That's right. That's huge. I think that's so important. Yeah. And, you know, we're lucky here in Illinois to have so many resource centers like Waterford, which we're going to be talking about, you know, because not everybody has those. Right. There are more integrative and complementary therapies starting to be put into the hospital setting, you know, in, um, you know, where they're addressing more of those um, symptoms and everything else. But, you know, it it's fast forward then to 2010, my full-time job had gone part-time and, you know, I thought, you know, I really want to do something in the oncology field. And I took a leap of faith at tender young age of 54 and I rolled in aesthetic school. <laughs> wow. People are like, you're going to school at 54? Well, and, and remind like, us again, yep. when you enrolled in school, where were you at? Like how many years had you been cancer free? Was that well, after your second battle then? That was like 12 years, really. Okay. 12 okay. years. And I was very involved in um, still doing like reach to recovery. I was then, I had moved to another town and um, that's when I got into the yoga study. And from that yoga study, um, it then moved over to Living Well Cancer Center that just was starting out in, oh, they probably started out in 2001, maybe 2002, I'm going to say. And that's the first cancer center uh, I was at. So it was at first privately owned, and now it's owned by Northwestern Hospital here in um, Chicago land area. And I started taking, you know, I was doing exercise classes. I was very involved in the center. So they had no skincare programs there. So that was everybody still was talking about, you know, I'm a little, you know, like look good, feel better they had, but yet people were questioning, starting to question what they were being given. Right. And I loved what the program represented. Uh, You know, I loved everybody uh, going to class and feeling so much better, but yet, It was mostly makeup too. look good, feel better was based mostly on makeup. But, you know, it wasn't addressing individual concerns. It wasn't, you know, really look, uh, be in particular about what went into the program. And um, that's, that's what started bothering me. But yet I didn't feel that um, I had, you know, that's where I thought being an esthetician would give me that power to really um, get into oncology. And so um, after, when I was in school, actually, my, um, the owner of the school, I attended International Skin Beauty Academy in Schaumburg. Dr. Doran was the one who started um, the program with me at Living Well. You know, she helped me set up the room. Yeah, 
she was, yeah, very, very good about doing that. And then before I even took my state test, I took more current um, oncology program. She was going to be in Illinois because most of all the oncology programs I had to really seek out, they weren't in Illinois. And then I took um, Spa for the Pink, which is now Wellness for Cancer and uh, Skin Care Therapy Program, and then Oncology Spa Solutions, basic and advanced classes. You know, wow. because I wanted to be well-rounded, you know, yes. I, I was yes. given this opportunity to start the program and I had great integrative therapists behind me, you know, all the massage therapists, the yoga teachers, but um, I really wanted to have a good background in the skin portion of it. Well, I think that in that situation to your age was a plus for you because you were 54 when you went back to get your aesthetics yeah. license. People didn't know whether you had been doing it a year or 20 years. So, <laughs> yeah, you know true. what I mean? So really that yeah. probably they I'm sure that it that was one of the reasons that you were successful was that your age really played a positive role in that because Again, you looked as if you came with experience, whether you did or not, not right. you know, your your clients not understanding that you were learning along the way with them. So I commend mm -hmm. you. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I think being in all the classes with the um, cancer patients, I truly knew what they wanted and needed, yes. you know, yes. and having all the other therapists, like when I had questions, you know, more questions after taking some of the trainings on lymphedema, you know, I reached out to the lymphedema specialist, you know, so I, there were so many people that were already involved in um, oncology and their therapies, like the yoga teacher and everything like that, um, which really gave me a good background, you know, because it was the whole body, mind, soul of the healing that I wanted to get into. So they all played a part in your skin, you know, right. so that was... Well and people don't understand either, you know, in originally when we started Hello Gorgeous, I had massage, although it was just a seated massage as part of the program, that not only would they uh -huh. get a facial and a manicure and a pedicure, but they would get a seated massage just to kind of relax them. And as we started to branch out and put these into affiliate salons, I took it out because you can really do damage if you don't know what you're doing. You can, if, mm -hmm. you know, unless the salon had an oncology trained massage therapist, we didn't allow them to have massage. So to your point of being able to have all of those people, the lymphedema specialist and the other people that were around you when you started, that was huge because you cannot oh, yeah. do things on women battling cancer you know, when they're going through treatment or even after treatment, you can't do services on them that you would a normal, a, a normal, healthy individual. Oh, definitely. And, you know, it's very hard to find, you know, where some people don't feel it's necessary. And you try to explain the importance. They say, well, you were new once. I said, yeah, but I also knew the importance of continuing my education. Right. And needing that mentorship. I think the mentorship is really, really important. Even now, you know, 10 years later, I think yes. that's really important. And um, yeah, massage therapy is very hard to, to find um, oncology trained. Yes. So, um, yeah. But they, they um, have to know it, like when you had mentioned to your point of the lymphedema specialist, you know, you have to be able to know how to massage that so that you're working with the lymphatic system, not against the lymphatic system, because if you've got somebody that has lymphedema, you know, you can actually cause right. a, a backup. So, you know, having that, it's it's really important to, to be aware of, you know, the services that you're getting, the person, the service provider that's, you know, providing that service and the products are being that are being used during those services. Right, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, and you know, so many people, think that it's only breast cancer that is, you know, important to, for the lymphedema, which it's anybody who's had surgery, radiation. I just had a woman last week, actually, who um, had thyroid cancer, and the doctor was doing her blood pressure on the side of her thy uh, thyroid where her tumors were, oh. and she has horrible lymphedema now. And she said her oncologist wasn't aware, which I was really surprised that that could cause 
lymphedema. Wow. And yeah, so that's, you know, making sure that everybody else in, is educated on that portion and 